All right, hello everybody and welcome to the session where we'll be studying properties of whole numbers today. So how is everyone doing? So who do we have here? All right, so Aditi is here, Janvi, we've got Monali, it must be. Okay, so Akanksha says she's super excited for the class. Uh, so am I, uh, because we'd be covering some pretty exciting properties in today's session. Uh, the properties are related to whole numbers. Okay, I'm doing good, Arka. I hope you're also doing great. Okay, we've got Aditya Chauhan. Hi, uh, we have Janvi here. We've got Rakesh Kumar. Hello, Rakesh. Okay, so I hope I'm audible and visible, right? So just give me a quick thumbs up in case I am, and we shall be ready to begin. Uh, Tarak Nath says hi, Arjun says hi, uh, Lakshman, we've got Advika, hello, science lover. All right, so Kritika has given the thumbs up. So Rahul, okay, so we've got plenty of students again. Uh, so I believe uh, let's, let's first have a look at what all properties we would be covering today. And remember, these properties are going to be related to whole numbers. Okay, so this is going to be the flow of the session. It's going to be a super simple session. And by the end of it, uh, you, you should be easily able to understand all these properties. So first, we're going to start off with closure property and then move on to commutativity of whole numbers and then associativity. And finally, wrap the session up by looking at distributivity property of whole numbers. And by the way, remember, all of these properties would be studied keeping whole numbers in mind so uh, I'm, I'm sure we guys are familiar with what whole numbers are right what are whole numbers numbers that start with zero and then one two three four they go on and on and on all right so lakshman says my name is ankit rai all right so sir is this chapter two i believe so uh, this should be right continuation of of the last uh, topic that we left off with okay so this is what it is and then hopefully i hope uh, you guys have subscribed to the channel i don't need to uh, you know tell you this every time but yeah students who have joined this uh, session uh, for the first time make sure you hit that subscribe button uh, so that you're able to receive all these notifications and updates on time okay now moving on i've got to also let you know to join this uh, telegram channel because there would be certain kind of updates that we would be able to better deliver it to you through this channel all the revision questions the session notes pdf files the sunday facts you've got quizzes homework questions session updates all of this would be on the telegram channel you will find the link for that in the descriptions box all right so come on moving on uh this was what we studied the last time, right? We've seen what a predecessor is. We've seen the definition of what a successor is. Number line, you move on the right, what do you do? Move on the left, what do you do? And then operations on whole numbers. And we understood that division by zero is not defined in mathematics. So all of these properties, we have already covered it before. So today, let's start off with these properties. And as I said, keeping whole numbers in mind, and we're going to start the session off with the closure property. Now, I'm, I'm sure you guys are ready with some papers and a pen or a pencil because there would be a few things that would be great if you can note it down, because they will come handy for you when you are revising these things later on. Okay, so coming up the closure property, come on, let's let's all focus and try and understand what the closure property is. So this is a simple property which states that if you perform any operation between any two whole numbers, the result should be a whole number. And what operations have we been studying? Well, we've been studying uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. So these are the four operations that we will be looking at. Okay, now first have a look at the addition property. Okay, so not able to view messages in telegram. All right, I'll come back to that at the end. Uh, now let's let's please focus on 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 this topic at hand. Okay, pretty important. So first thing, clo closure property, let's apply it to addition. Now what happens? What am I doing here? I'm adding two whole numbers. And the result as you can see is another whole number, right? Now this happens every time you pick any whole number. Okay, like even if I pick zero plus zero, that is going to be equal to how much zero, which is still going to be a whole number, you can choose any whole number, okay, three plus seven, the result is what 10. So when you add two whole numbers, the result is always going to be a whole number, you're not suddenly going to get something like a negative number, or a fraction or a decimal, that's not going to happen, right. So Anytime you're adding two whole numbers, the result is going to be a whole number. And that's the reason why we say that addition follows the closure property. Okay, make sure you're writing it down. 
all right that addition follows the closure property so this is how you should be making notes right closure here and then addition put a tick mark here and then you can give an example like let's say 2 plus 7 is equal to 9 and then you can say that whole number plus whole number is equal to a whole number all right so i'm sure this was fairly simple we've understood it when we add two whole numbers the result is always going to be a whole number now let's move on we've seen addition now let's check out if this property applies to subtraction or not okay so here's an example of of subtraction 3 minus 2 is equal to 1 i can pick 7 minus 4 is equal to 3 so from one whole number if i'm subtracting another whole number the result is a whole number now it is not going to apply every time for some numbers yes like like when you take a bigger number subtract a smaller number from that the result is 3 or 5 minus 1 is equal to 4 but then when i take this example here okay let's suppose i take 2 minus 3 that's also perfect right because 2 is a whole number and 3 is also a whole number but you see what is the result the result is not a whole number okay so that's the reason why we say subtraction does not follow closure property because it should follow for any whole number all right like other examples would be what 10 minus 13 this is equal to how much minus 3 and we all know minus 3 is not a whole number okay so note making that is cr cr crucial here okay closure we said addition it follows and then for subtraction as you can see subtraction does not follow closure property in some cases it does but in some cases it doesn't that's the reason why we say subtraction does not follow closure okay um, i'm sure you've understood this let's move on to the third operation now the third one is going to be multiplication all right so multiplication as you can see you can pick any two whole numbers the result is always going to be a whole number right like 7 multiplied with 3 is equal to 21 4 multiplied with 9 is equal to 36. So when one whole number is multiplied with another, the result is always going to be a whole number. Okay, so I'm sure so far we are all following this. So uh, we've had a look at three operations, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication. Now for addition, it follows the closure property. Subtraction, it does not follow the closure property. And multiplication, as you have just seen, it follows the closure property okay now last operation that we can check out is going to be division all right so you see that 6 divided by 5 is 1.2 but what is 1.2 1.2 we all know is not a whole number right because if the property was true one whole number when you divide it with another whole number the result should be a whole number right it happens for some numbers like 10 when you divide it by 5 is equal to 2 12 when you divide it by 3 is equal to 4 but as you can see there are some numbers for which the result is not a whole number and that's the reason why we again say that division does not follow the closure property because it should follow in every single case not just some cases okay so so far what have we seen here uh, well we have seen that closure property okay addition follows it subtraction doesn't follow it multiplication it follows it and division it does not follow the closure property okay so so far if there are any doubts please let me know i'll clarify those doubts and then we'll move on to the next property okay so arka says it's a decimal yes it is called a decimal arka well done it's not going to be a whole number is this class for six to eight yes this is a great six session right um i know this fact okay no doubt says arka all right dhruvi says she has just joined never mind we've just started any which ways all right so we don't have any doubts awesome so we have understood this what are natural numbers is what samad says natural numbers are going to be counting numbers your one two three four five on and on and on okay so the only difference between natural numbers and whole numbers is that okay yeah i simply forgot about this yes all natural numbers are whole numbers all whole numbers are not natural numbers because what are natural numbers these are your natural numbers 1 2 3 on and on and on and what are whole numbers 0 1 2 3 on and on and on so as you can see one is a natural number it's also a whole number yeah same two same three four five yeah but then zero is only a whole number it is not a natural number so that's the reason why we say all natural numbers are whole numbers but all whole numbers are not natural numbers all whole numbers are natural we're only counting the zero because that's the only difference between whole and natural okay moving on now to the next property now that we're clear with closure, 
okay now let's move on and check out the property of commutativity okay now again i'm stressing on this fact please make good notes while you are going through the session because sometimes what happens is these kind of terms may confuse you up a little bit okay you may get confused thinking hey was this associative or was it uh, commutative that's the reason why I prepare good notes so now we're going to check out the commutative property okay this is again a simple property which says the order of operation between two whole numbers does not matter okay so again we are going to check out all the four operations addition subtraction multiplication and division so first let's check out addition you add 2 plus 3 or 3 plus 2 the result is going to be the same right you can pick any two whole numbers like 5 plus 4 this is going to be equal to 4 plus 5 and both are going to give you the same answer that is 9 so the order in which you add does not matter the answer is going to be the same okay as you can see 2 plus 3 means you're starting from here and you're hopping three times you get to 5 3 plus 2 is going to mean you're starting from 3 you're hopping two times and you arrive at the same answer which is 5 okay so if i were to generalize it we're going to write it like this that a plus b is going to be equal to b plus a is that clear guys so this is again a fairly simple concept commutative how can you remember it remember it like a commute okay you are traveling from house to your school okay let's suppose you take the same journey every time and then you're traveling from school back to home let's suppose you pick the same journey so the journey is going to remain the same right so that's how you can easily remember that commutative is going to be a plus b is equal to b plus a Arka says, can I ask one doubt from the NCRT book? Yes, you can. Okay, uh, I will give you a space where you can ask the doubt. But first, let's stick to the commutative property. And then when I tell you, you can, you know, type your answers, type your doubt in the comments box. Okay, now, now that you have checked addition, the next property that we're going to check is subtraction and see if subtraction is commutative or not. Does order matter in subtraction? And as you can see here, order plays a crucial role in subtraction because 5 minus 3, as you can see here, is 2. But 3 minus 5 is not equal to 2. 3 minus 5 is actually equal to how much? Negative 2. So that's the reason why, you know, subtraction is not going to follow, uh, you know, your commutative property. We cannot say that A minus B is going to be, sorry, we can write it like A minus B is not equal to B minus A. All right, so this is again a fairly simple one. Now let's move on and check out the next operation for commutativity, and that is going to be multiplication. And as you know, you, you must have taken some examples to understand that, yeah? So order again doesn't matter in multiplication. 5 multiplied with 3 is equal to 3 multiplied with 5, and that is equal to 15, yes? 10 multiplied with 2 is equal to 2 multiplied with 10, and you're going to get the same answer that is 20. So what do we have to say? Yes multiplication follows the commutative property right so we can generalize it like this a multiplied with b is equal to b multiplied with a and now the last uh, operation that we've got to check is going to be what the division rule and again take some numbers and verify it yourself the example is here 20 divided by 4 is not going to be equal to 4 divided by 20 right both are going to be different here and that's the reason why again we will say uh, that uh, division does not follow commutative okay so if i were to summarize it like this i will write it commutative property okay addition yes it follows commutative property subtraction no it does not multiplication yes it does and then division it does not okay uh, and then you can uh, write some uh, notes like this here a plus b is going to be equal to b plus a and then you can mention a minus b is not going to be equal to b minus a and that's the reason why we are saying subtraction doesn't follow commutativity and then you can write that a multiplied with b is equal to b multiplied with a and here you can say that a divided by b is not going to be equal to b divided by a and then at the side you can take some example okay so when you are revising notes like this it will become a lot easier for your mind to understand them rather than going through the textbook and you know reading all that theory because i always found uh, short notes like this to be easily revisable rather than you know uh, reading uh, stuff out from the textbook 
All right, so Madhusudan says uh, you have a doubt. Okay, so now we are done with commutative. So you can post any of your doubts. I'll be happily able to uh, clarify that. Yes, go ahead, ask all your doubts done. We're going to wait for you. Okay, quickly type your doubts in the comments box, please. <clears throat> okay, so till you guys are typing out your doubts, uh, go ahead and answer this question. The order in which we add whole numbers does not affect the sum. What do we call this property? Well, we've just learnt it. I'm going to give you 30 seconds for that. Okay, why does subtraction does not follow any order? Okay, I will explain you that in a bit now. But, but go ahead and type out these answers in the comments box. I'll remember what your doubt was. Why does subtraction not follow any order? Dhruvi says, uh, associative and distributive the same? No, Dhruvi, we're going to study them separately. Associative property is different. Distributive property is different. How many whole numbers are there between? What is that? 5 to 92. Okay, I'll explain you that. But first, okay, answer has been revealed. And all of you have uh, given the correct answer there. Now, I'm going to come to your doubts. First doubt is Madhusudan, I believe, right? So, you asked... Why does subtraction not follow the commutative property, right? Now, if subtraction were to follow commutative, the order in which you are subtracting shouldn't matter, right? Which means if you're doing 5 minus 2 or 2 minus 5, both ways you should be getting the same answer. Only then I will be able to say that subtraction follows commutative property. But as you can see here, 5 minus 2 is equal to 3. 2 minus 5 is equal to minus 3. 3 and minus 3 are different, right? So that's the reason why the order in which you subtract matters. And that's the reason why we say that subtraction does not follow the commutative property. And we say addition follows, right? Because uh, even if you do 3 plus 5 or 5 plus 3, both will give you the same answer. Okay, if both results are giving you the same answer, we say it follows the property. If it does not give you the same answer, like in this case, you're getting 3 and minus 3, which means it doesn't follow it. Okay, uh, all right. Is commutative property useful? Of course, it is useful as you will see later on when you come to algebra. Okay, so, so far, just, just focus on, on these things. And what was the other doubt? Um associativity and distributivity are different of course i will be coming to that and yes this was the doubt right how many whole numbers are there between uh, 5 and 92 how will you solve it okay i'm, I'm going to give you a, a an approach in which you can okay let's let's whenever you encounter a question like this right the reason why it's hard to do it is because the numbers are big make the numbers small use the fact to your advantage let's suppose i ask you between 1 and 6 how many numbers are there? Now, you could solve this question manually, right? Like 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah. So, there are going to be these four numbers between 1 and 6. Yeah. And then you take some patterns and then you will come to know that when you take the difference between these two, what is the first number? The first number is 1. The last number is 6. When you take the difference, how much do you get? 5. Now, from 5, subtract 1 again. Okay. That's how you get the answer. Now, applying the same strategy to the one that you asked, between 5 and 92, how many numbers are going to be there? From 92, first thing that you have to do is subtract 5. So, from 92, when you subtract 5, how much do you get? I believe you get 87, right? So, from this again, you subtract 1. And that's how you get the answer. Okay? So, use this rule uh, to figure out the, the number of numbers between the two numbers. All right, like let's suppose between uh, 11 and, uh, uh, you know, 91. Uh, or let's say, let's let's make it even more crazier. 99. How many numbers are going to be there? First thing that you do here is you take the difference. 99 minus 11. How much do you get? 88. From the difference, you have to subtract 1 again. 88 minus 1, you get 87. And that is going to be the number of numbers between 11 and 99. Okay, so what about notes? I've, I've given you the process of taking notes, right? But then these would be shared any which ways on the Telegram channel. But still, uh, the idea here is when you are working along with me, I want you to participate. 
I want you to develop that habit where you're writing things down and you're listening to me simultaneously because that's how, you know, the best practices of learning math. That's about it. But yeah, these notes would be shared on the Telegram channel eventually. Okay, I believe I've, I've clarified all your doubts. Well done. Answers are also popping up there. Now, let's move on to the next property, which is going to be the associative property. Now, I'm going to tell you that don't get confused between commutative and associative. Okay, commutative, think of the word commute. Okay, home to school, school to home, A to B, B to A. Okay, but when you think of associative property, think of the word association. Association means what? You know, partnership, something like that. Yeah, so this should be easily able to do it now. So the formation of different groups, ah, definition isn't that important any which ways. It's just saying that groups, when you combine them, it should not change the answer. Okay, I'm going to uh, take the example of addition now. Let's suppose, you know, this is the case. 2 plus 3, I'm making a group of 2 and 3 together, plus 5, or 2 plus 3 plus 5. So as per the property of association, let's check it out if they are the same or not. So 2 plus 3 is how much? 5. 5 plus 5, you're going to get a 10 right? Doesn't matter even if I change the association or the partnership, the answer is going to remain the same. 2 plus 8 is what you're going to get here and the answer is the same 10. So, when you combine group of two numbers, okay, it will not impact the actual answer is what associative property says in simple words, okay? So, as you can see, uh, you know, 2 plus 3 inside the bracket plus 5 is 10 and 2 plus this time 3 plus 5 inside the bracket is 10 again and both times you're getting the same answer. So this is how you can generalize it. And how would you uh, note it down? Associative, associative. Okay, first operation we are studying is a plus and then you can put a tick mark and then the example like this. A plus B plus C is going to be equal to A plus B plus C. So association first B and C together and then A and B together. You can also invent your own. Like you can also have A plus C plus B will not matter. The answer is going to be the same. Yes, Aditya has again said that associative needs bracket. Yes, associations, brackets together. Yes, you, you move the brackets, right? Yeah, cool. So you guys have understood this. Well done. So this is associative. So we have seen addition, right? Now let's check if subtraction also works for associative property. By the way, this is going to be the visual representation of how association works. Instead of numbers, we've taken dots here. Okay, so 2, 3, 5, you get the same result. This time you're combining pink and green. But you can also go ahead and combine blue and pink or red, whatever that color is. All right, you will get the same uh, answer that they are 10 dots there. Okay, so this is going to be a fairly good visual representation of the associative rule. Okay, well done. Next. All right, now let's apply the associative property to subtraction because you remember it, we are not doing anything too complicated here. We are simply studying four properties, closure, associative, okay, we, we studied the, the commutative, right? So commutative, and now we are in the process of studying associative and we are simply checking if they hold true for these four operations. That's all we are doing, okay? So don't feel like, hey, this is getting too much or or I uh, have a lot to remember. No, you don't have to, okay? There is a logical process that we are following here. First, we check for closure, then we check for commutative, then we check for associative, and that's how it's rolling on, okay? So now let's check it for subtraction. Let's see, let's let's form brackets. You can put brackets on, on your, okay? If we put other ingredients first in a juice, it will, oh, that, that's, that's like a good, good example, right? Yeah, it will not change the taste, you know, the order in which I couldn't think that that way. Aditya, that's a very, very amazing example, okay? So, the order in which you put ingredients, okay, it's not going to change the taste of the juice. The taste of the juice is going to remain the same, right? Well done, well done, awesome, I like that. Okay, so now when it comes to subtraction, well, that, that's going to change it, okay? As you can see here. Uh, let me just put that back. Okay, so 5 minus 3 minus 1 inside 3 minus 1 is inside the bracket here. As you can see, this becomes 5 minus 2. The answer is 3. But if I change the bracket now and put 5 and 3 inside the bracket, 5 minus 3 is how much? 2 minus 1. You see the answer changes. So 
when you're removing something, maybe the taste of the juice is going to change. But well done. I really like that example out there. So subtraction does not follow associative property. And now we're going to check multiplication. As you will see, uh, you know, the order in which you multiply doesn't matter. Uh, uh, answer is going to be the same. So again, this is how we can generalize the associative property for multiplication that A multiplied with B multiplied with C is inside the bracket is going to be equal to A multiplied with B multiplied with C. Okay. Yes. Connect math with real life. Awesome. I, I really like that. Madhusudan says, I have a doubt in distributive. I'm going to come to that. You, you will study distributive property after the associative property. All right. So in the last example for associative property is going to be checking out if division holds true. And as you can see, plug in some numbers. Division is not going to follow through both ways. You're getting the different answer. Okay. So if I were to summarize all the things that we have studied so far, we have studied the closure, we have studied the commutative, and just now we have finished the associative property. Okay, addition here, subtraction here, multiplication here, division here. Now, closure, addition, well done, subtraction, no, multiplication, yes, division, no. What about commutative? Yes for this, no for this, yes for this, no for this, and then associative. Yes for addition, yes for multiplication, no for subtraction, and no for division. So, so far, if I were to tell you this way, addition and multiplication are following all the properties. But then subtraction and division, as you can see, are not following any of the, okay, sorry. Subtraction, yes, for whole numbers, it doesn't follow that. For integers, it does. Okay, my bad. Cool. So, this is going to be the summary of what we have studied so far. And now comes the topic where you guys are facing some doubts, but go ahead, tell me the answer to this first, and then we'll move on to the distributive property. Go ahead, uh, type your answers in, in the comments box and, and tell me the answer. Guide the delivery boy to deliver the hot pizza in record time. Assume the time taken to cover the road is equivalent to the time taken to solve. Now you should also tell me which addition is easier. This, this addition is easier or this addition is easier. Will there be NCRT solutions? Yes, we will have a session where we will pick questions uh, from the NCRT textbooks. Uh, you know, we'll pick mostly the difficult ones, the challenging ones, and there'll be a session on that. Yes, Madhusudan has also summarized here. Okay, 1054. Which one was easier to add? Okay, the second one was easier, what you're saying? Or the first one was easier? Janvi says both are easier. <laughs> okay, I, I found the first one to be a little easier to add because adding this was easy for me. 590 plus 410, this gave me 1000, okay? And to 1000, I had to add 54 and I got the answer as 1054. But the second one, uh, you know, 410 plus 54, you know, this took some time, 464, and then I had to add 590 to that. So this is how your associative uh, property helps you a little bit in calculations because there are some numbers which when you put inside the bracket, you get the answer a little faster when you compare. And this should be a very good example, okay? 490 plus 510, adding that together is a lot easier than adding this up. But yeah, nonetheless, you are getting the same answer in both the ways. Okay, so now we're gonna move on. And the last property that we would be checking out is going to be the distributive property, okay? Uh, Sukhdeep says, I have a doubt in associative property of division. Okay, let me just try to recap that again. All right, so A divided by B divided by C. And then on the right hand side also, I will have A divided by B divided by C. Now it's your choice, whichever way you want to put the bracket. Okay, I'll put the bracket here, A and B inside the bracket. And on the right hand side, I'm going to put B and C inside the bracket. Okay, now in the place of A, B and C, put some numbers and check. What do you get? Like let's say I can put 10 here divided by 5 divided by 2 and then I'll check the same thing here 10 divided by 5 divided by 2 okay you will see that the left hand side and the right hand side they are not going to match because first I will do this 10 divided by 5 what will I get 2 and then I will do 2 divided by 2 I will see that the answer is 1 but on the right hand side I will have to do this part inside the bracket first right so 5 divided by 2 is going to be how much it's going to give you 2.5 then when you divide it by 2.5, the answer is going to be 4. And we all know that 1 is not equal to 4. So that's the reason why we say division and subtraction in a similar way are not going to follow the associative property. Okay, I hope Sukhdeep, 
your your doubt is clarified now okay but but generally my word of advice to you all is going to be after the session make sure you're practicing some questions on the basis of the concepts that we have covered because only then your mind will start to think a little clearly and these doubts are going to get clarified okay now the last property as i said that we're checking out is going to be the distributive property we're going to do it very slowly make sure you listen to this okay so again a b c now what you can do is multiply these two and then multiply these two together okay add them up or another way of doing that is adding these two okay and then multiplying the result by b so fairly simple thing here okay so look 2 multiplied with 3 plus 5 is that clear so far 2 multiplied with 3 plus 5 now there are two ways to get the answer one is okay one is 2 multiplied with you can calculate what 3 plus 5 is okay 3 plus 5 is going to be how much 8 and then 2 multiplied with 8 you will get 6 okay another way to do that is 2 multiplied with 3 plus 5 you can multiply this 2 with the first number inside the bracket and write it like 2 times 3. And what is the sign now? Plus. So put the plus sign. And then 2 multiply it with the next number inside the bracket. 2 multiplied with 5. You see you're getting 6 plus 10. And both methods are fetching you the same answer. So now the question should be, why are you learning this rule then? When, when both the methods are giving you the same answer, what's the point in learning it? Well, the point in learning is this. Let me just rub these through. There will be a lot of situations as you move to higher grades that in place of numbers, you're mostly going to encounter letters. Okay. In math, we call them variables. You study them in algebra. Okay. So 2 multiplied with 3 plus 5, it's easy for you because you know how to add numbers. But let's suppose I give you this. A multiplied with B plus C. You don't know what A is, you don't know what B is, and you don't know what C is. And the question given to you will be to simplify this, to make this look a little simple. Then you have to rely on distributivity. First, what you're going to do? You're going to multiply this A with the first term inside the bracket and write A multiplied with B, and then plus, and then the same A will get multiplied with the second term inside the bracket, A multiplied with C. That's it. And then you write it like this is AB plus AC. As simple as that okay they can be three or four terms inside the bracket as well like you can have a multiplied with b plus c plus d the rule is going to remain the same this will be a gets multiplied with b we write it like a b then the same a gets multiplied with c i write it like a c and then the same a gets multiplied with d i write it like a d and this is what is called distributive of multiplication over addition so this is multiplication over addition is inside the bracket and then you also have multiplication over subtraction. Okay, let me bring that equation. So this is multiplication and this is the subtraction bit. Yes. Okay, so this is a simple rule. The reason why you're covering this up because you will be studying algebra later on where instead of numbers, they will be variables or letters, you know, would be the right word for you at this point in time. And you would need this property to simplify things and find out answers. All right. So... I'm going to show you this visually as well. The visual proof, this should be uh, pretty good for you to check it out. All right. So first thing, A multiplied with B, you can imagine that to be a rectangle with length A and, and breadth B. So the area of this rectangle, how do you find area of rectangle? I'm sure you know this, right? Length multiplied with breadth. So A multiplied with B is nothing but the area of green rectangle, right? And B multiplied with C is going to be what? the area of red rectangle so you're doing this now all right now let's see if if it can be done through the left hand side here look a multi b multiplied with a plus c now you can have a, a rectangle here whose length is going to be a plus c if you just rearrange that and the breadth is going to be b the area is going to be the same because i haven't changed the rectangles the rectangles are the same it's just that i have aligned them in a different way that's all so this is going to be a fairly good visual proof of you understanding distributive rule okay madhusudan need to study madhusudan the need is simple they are used to simplify expressions or equations in algebra that you guys will be studying in depth later on all right 
at now they may seem very simple i mean it is common sense why to bother with it but then in place of numbers when you will have variables later on that is when you will realize that these tools will go a long way in simplifying the expressions okay yes come on so this was the visual proof for it now go ahead and tell me the answer to this question okay this should be fairly simple i, I know you guys should be easily able to tell me the answer for this so rian plans on buying 100 ml juice containers costing 150 rupees each so one packet is going to cost you 150 rupees he buys 10 of these from one shop 18 from another shop find the total money that is being spent by rehan okay deepa hello oh sudiksha cool all right so go ahead uh, type out your answers in the comment box tell me what is the total money that uh, rehan should be spending here Three ten plus triple nine. What about that, Dhruvi? Maybe there was some context to that before. I couldn't see that. I'm sorry. Okay, Arka has given B. Okay, there is no option here, Arka. You have to type and tell me the answer. What about three ten plus nine hundred and ninety nine? Uh, uh, I don't get that, Dhruvi. I don't understand the question. Deepa says, uh, Sudiksha, I'm sorry, you've joined now. It's okay, we are at the end of the session now. Never mind, you can watch the video later and then you will be able to understand pretty much the whole idea. Araknath says, 4250. Okay, so we have this answer now. Aditya, we will do distributive property. Yes, go ahead, apply the distributive property. But as I said, yeah, you have numbers. You can do it even without the distributive property if you want. Can you please tell once again, uh, we have reached the end, Deepa, you will have to watch the video, all right, because we've, we've like reached the end, I'm really sorry for that. Uh, watch the video later on and you, you will e easily get it. There's nothing to worry, the properties were all simple. All right, so how are we gonna solve this? As you can see, cost of one container is 150, okay? And the total money that he has spent, look, he has bought 10 from the first shop. Let's just write that down, shop one, shop two. From here, he has bought 10 and from here, Rihan has purchased 18 packets, okay? One packet is going to cost you 150. So, 10 packets are going to cost you how much? You have to add 150 10 times, right? And that is nothing but 150 multiplied with 10. In a similar way, from shop 2, he has purchased 18. So, 150 will have to be added 18 times and that's nothing but 150 multiplied with 18. Do this and you will get the answer, okay? Look, here I have applied distributive rule, right? Instead of doing, uh, calculating this, yeah, you could have done it this way. 50, 150 multiplied with 10 is 1500 plus 150 multiplied with 18. You could have calculated that and then added them to get the answer. Or this way, you would save time. That's it. You can take 150 outside the bracket and then write 10 plus 18 inside because 150 is there for both the numbers. Okay, and that's how you will get the answer as 4200. Maybe uh, some calculation mistake. Okay, you're getting 4,250. Okay, let me just check if, if we are right here. 150 multiplied with 28, 8 times 0, 8 times 40, 0, 4, 8 times 1, 8, so that'll be 12, 2 times 0, 0, 2, 5, 10, 0, 2 times 1, 2, so 3, 0, 0, 2, 4. All right, we, we are correct. 4,200 is going to be the answer. Okay, never mind. There must have been some calculation mistake. All right, so cool. You've understood this, right? Now, there is going to be method, faster calculation. So 26 multiplied with 99, you know, you could do it this way. This multiplication, I'm sure you guys are familiar with how to multiply numbers using that. But generally, a faster way is going to be this, okay? 26 multiplied with 99. 99, you can write it like 100 minus 1, right? So you see, now you, you must be understanding how distributivity uh, property we are using here to ease the calculations okay one example that i gave you was algebraic simplification but now things are very simple right 26 multiplied with 99 this way or this is going to be the faster way of doing that right if i apply this out this is going to be simply 2600 minus 26 you are going to get the same answer okay so kiran is going to be the faster because kiran is using yes she is using distributive property here all right, come on, let's move on now. Now that you've understood it, this is going to be a fairly good crossword puzzle. Now go ahead, name me what this property is. We've just covered it. 
a multiplied with b plus c inside the bracket is going to be a multiplied with b plus a multiplied with c. What do we call it? What do we call this property? Very good. Distributivity, right? Distributivity. So let me write it down here. D I S T R I distributivity. Very good. Distributivity property. Number that follows additive identity. You remember what additive identity is? A, when you add 0 to that, you get A. So additive identity. You can start from 2. 2 is here. So Z E R O. That is going to be 0. So this is down. We've taken care of the down. Now let's take care of a cross. Number that follows multiplicative identity. What is multiplicative identity? 1, right? So I'll write that here. O and the E is already there. And the last thing, what do you call this? A plus B is equal to B plus A. Very good. You call this commutativity property, right? So C O M M commu A T -E V T. -E. So you see, we've completed the crossword puzzle. Yes. Here it is. You, you are right. You can also say it commutative, but then property of distributivity and property of commutativity. Well done, guys. And this is going to be the summary. As I said, addition and multiplication follow all these three subtraction and division you've seen does not follow these three and this is distributive property of multiplication over addition and now it's going to be homework time all right so which of the following whole numbers can be represented as squares i'm sure you you can recall what squares are so you've got four options here uh, this is going to be option a this is option B, option C, and option D. So you can type the options or you can also type in the answer in the comment box. So it's, it's, it's 15, 12, 25, or 5. Comment your answers out there. All right. Very good. Next. Of course, you remember, we've got you covered. We're planning on, you know, giving you sessions like these, which are going to be helpful for you. So nothing to worry. And then, uh, yes, uh, I'm sure you guys have been seeing videos related to these three projects, right? The Science Project, the Level Up Series, and the Explorers Club. So this is going to be very good. You know, you've seen plenty of good science projects happening on, on the channel. So good content is coming your way to make sure you understand whatever material you're covering in school and be able to visualize that as well. And this is going to be the next session for us, Identities and Patterns, 24th of May, 4 p.m. So stay tuned for that. Don't be late. And yeah, I've got to also tell you the two teacher advantage that happens at Baiju's classes. You know, 24 seven video lessons would be there on the app, uh, uh, you know, which help you uh, understand the concept and visualize it better. Then you've got your personalized learning journeys. Yeah, personalized to as per you are performing. Yeah, cool. And the dual teacher model, I'm, I'm sure you know this. One teacher will explain you all the concepts and you've got an extra teacher to clarify all your doubts. And lastly, the doubt clarification is going to happen instantaneously. So do check this out. You will find the link for this in the descriptions box. And lastly, I've got to remind again of the uh, Telegram channel. Make sure you join it because that's where you get the session notes. And using those session notes, you know, you can prepare notes of your own. And last but not the least, in case you've liked the content, well, hit on that like button, share it with your friends as well. They will find it helpful. And in case you still haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that. All right. So that's it, guys. Uh, from my side, I hope the session was up, up easy for you to understand. You've understood all the properties that we've covered. We're going to meet tomorrow again. So till that time, take care of yourself and keep practicing. Thank you. Bye-bye.